Every summer, Hu Yongyan would finalize results of student examinations at the Central Conservatory of Music in Beijing. Hu's illustrious career includes guest appearances with the world's leading orchestras in Europe, the U.S., and Asia. He has worked with artists of international renown. But at home, in his current role as artistic director of the EOS Repertoire Orchestra, he is on a mission to nurture the next generation of China's musical talent. Welcome, welcome to Icon. Glad to have have you here in Icon. Well, this is like your your home base, right? This is your <laughs> headquarters. <laughs> this is your territory. <laughs> my turf. Anyway, um, yeah, my honor, my honor. Well. Uh, Thank you. You have now different titles. You helped establish the uh, EOS Repertoire Orchestra, and now you are the head of it. Tell us more about this orchestra. What, what, what is this about? It means excellent orchestra sound. Yeah, so it's orchestra academy. So it's set up for the purpose of helping young musicians uh, to be trained in orchestra repertoire, to mm. help them how to play in the orchestra. It's like an uh, orchestra player. Uh, so people might be uh, wondering why, you know, what's the difference between a conservatory student and uh, your student. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the conservatory student is basically to teach you if you play violin, they teach you play how to become a good violinist. Mm. But we teach them play how to be a, a team player. Team member. Yeah, team member and orchestra player. And musically, it's the same thing. Uh -huh. uh, it's the same thing, but uh, it's different. In one, the focus is different. It's a focus different, and uh, you've got to listen more. And then you, you needed to watch conductor too. But wh why do you want to stress that part of, uh, of their career, basically? This mm. is like the foundation of their future career. Mm. Teamwork, team spirit, yeah. team member. Why do you want to stress that part? Well, first of all, you have to be aware, you know, you are uh, one of the team member. Mm. So you are not always play loud, you know, if you play trumpet. Sometimes you have to play very, very soft, mm. as soft as you can. That's very difficult, very mm. difficult. And uh, sometimes the violins always we say the prima donna, okay, in the orchestra. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, sometimes you have to be just really shut up, really, really back off, mm. let the clarinet of oboe, you know, mm. uh, play it out. So it's a, it's it's a, it's a more it's like a, a soccer team, mm. you know. You are not always the most important one. It's Sometimes, teamwork. Yeah, it's teamwork, but uh, it, 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 it takes a lot of um, uh, you know, uh, focus, mm. and also I think it takes a lot of mind work to listen to you know, what's going on mm. around you. Since its inception in 2006, the EOS Repertoire Orchestra at the Central Conservatory of Music has achieved outstanding results and made a highly positive social impact. Thanks in no small measure to Hu Yongyan's devotion. Uh, I've known Mr. Hu for a long time, and we've become friends. At the start, I was just a student in the conservatory and the first violin in the China Youth Symphony Orchestra. I felt surprised and very lucky that I could have Mr. Hu as my teacher. Then he was invited to establish EOS, and I became a teacher at the Orchestra Academy. He is my boss, but also my friend. During the past 10 years, we've worked a lot in the development of EOS, it's a rough road. I cooperated with Mr. Hu for the first time when I was a sophomore at the academy. My first impression was that he's a very persistent and strict musician, which made me feel distant. But when I began working with him, I found out he's a very easygoing man. 
there's a child in his heart. I think I know him for more than 10 years already. He's not only a conductor, not only a professor, but his ideas is the most uh, unforgettable things because he has a lot of ideas that you will never even think about them. He is a very patient professor, that which you cannot see. But only when he teach, he will show his patience. My parents, yeah, will both play in the Shanghai Symphony. My aunt plays violin, my you know, uncle plays violin. My daughter is my uh, you know, big love, of course. My father is a very extraordinary man with a very extraordinary appetite for life. What is your biggest expectation <laughs> out of her then now? As long as you know, she's happy, that will be fine. You were born into a family yeah. of musicians. Yeah. It was, was family influence or basically it was out of your own personal love for music? Well, it's, uh, basically it's a family because you know, by my time, you know, uh, either you are uh, rich, you know, you're from a rich family or you're from a musical family. So you, you can get those means to learn music. Mm. You know, poor family, poor kids can't. They couldn't know. afford. I don't, I don't think they can afford it, even for the instrument. Mm. Violin or even you know, big piano, that's, mm. uh, that's unthinkable. Uh, so yeah, my uh, case is just from family. Uh, from your grandfather? From my grandfather, from my parents, who were both playing in the Shanghai Symphony. My aunt plays violin, my you know, uncle plays violin. My aunt actually also the first ballerina in China. And my uh, uncle, uh, uh, my oldest uncle is a movie director. So we, we sort of in the sort of a... Art, art family, the family of artists. Yeah, it's a little bit artsy family. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So you started fairly early, four years old, violin. Yeah, three, four, five years old, because that's sort of a very natural process, you know. Mm. I didn't read music though until you know I was like ten something, because you know when you're really young and uh, you know your parents, your grandpa, father, you know, play violin, you sort of just remember. Uh, so, well, you were immersed actually in music, <laughs> right, you know, right, without yeah. even realizing. Yeah, it. right. It's a, it's a lifestyle, you know. Everybody around you is a lifestyle. You practice, and uh, you know, if you don't practice, you just gotta, you know beat up by your parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, I think many musicians, you know, are the same way. I've been with music just all my life and uh, I, I couldn't quit, you know. I, I cannot live without music. And basically music is you have to keep learning, you know. I That's would right. Say, you, know, you, you, um, you learn Beethoven, you look at the score, you conduct the orchestra and then the, one after another concert, you still have to do the same process. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, a journey for life. Besides music, the greatest pride of Hu Yongyan is his daughter, Zoe. Born in the U.S., Zoe is his only child. Though she has opted for a career in journalism rather than music, her dad's artistic heritage runs deep in the blood. Although she's not in China, Zoe recorded a video of herself talking about her father and sent it to us. As anyone who knows him can tell you, my father is a very extraordinary man with a very extraordinary appetite for life. I remember growing up, he would always really be wanting to share with me and with the people that he knew all the things that he was excited by and all the things that he loved. And usually those things had to do with music. So I basically ended up spending my entire childhood in a concert hall, um, listening to different orchestras around the world play symphonies and beautiful pieces of music. And because of that, I think I really 
grown to develop an appreciation for art and culture and music that I owe entirely to him. I also remember as a kid, it was always really exciting to be around my dad. Uh, he would take me to different, you know, jazz bars in Beijing at midnight. And, you know, here I was, a 10 year old, feeling really cool for being out so late with all of his friends. And um, being in that circle of musicians and artists and young people was always just so amazing to me. Even now, whenever we travel and we go to places like New York or Paris or Berlin, he always has to see the museums and he'll take me with him and we'll just spend hours there. And he'll always be looking for a piece of art that inspires him and moves him the way that music does. And I think watching that, watching that artist's drive in him has been really, really special for me. And I'm really thankful that he's my dad. My daughter is my, uh, you know, big love, of course, you know, uh, uh, only, only child, and of course, um, um, uh, she grew, she grows up um, uh, in America and then Hong Kong, and then uh, she went back to uh, Midwest and finished uh, you know, uh, high school, and then uh, she's uh, in uh, NYU, but at Abu Dhabi. But like, she's not a musician. She's not a musician at all. She's probably like you. She's a journalist. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. She, uh, she. So you didn't have any any major influence on her in that regard, say, because <sighs> you were born, say, into a family of musicians. You are going to be a next, you know, generation musician. Uh, uh, never, of course, never. Uh, but we, of course, we, we let her to play violin and the piano, whatever. Uh, but we never uh, pushed and never pushed um, mm. because we probably think, you know. Uh, maybe we should change the some direction, you know, not always music, <laughs> music, music. She does great, and she, uh, I think she interned at uh, CNN last year with uh, Becky Anderson. All right. Yeah, so uh, my, 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 my favorite anchor. Is she more Chinese or more American, culturally speaking? I think it's both. It really helped her a lot. Of course, you know, she's not trying to save the world. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to change the world. <laughs> so, what is your biggest expectation out of her then now? As long as you know she's happy, that will be fine. It's the basically is the uh, you know given uh, a second chance. Suddenly, just suddenly like open a can. Of We're so close. That kind of feeling actually um, it's a really um, uh, warmed me up. Their growth actually, you know, is mine too. In 1977, China's National University entrance exam was restored after the decade-long Cultural Revolution. The move reignited a hunger for learning among China's young people. Of about 1,500 students who took the entrance exam for the Central Conservatory of Music, only five from the Shanghai district were admitted. Hu Yongyang was one of them, and with him was Tan Dun. That was like a life-changing year to you, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's the. Basically, it's the, uh, you know, given uh, a second chance to become actually what you like to be. Why, why conducting then? Well, everybody loves conductor. Everybody wants to be conductor. To Nowadays, be the leader. Yeah, to be, you know, it's a, it's a sense, you know, it's a power, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, fascinating, it's, uh, it's fresh. And, you mm -hmm. know. I think I still remember like uh, 30 plus students. It's too many. By, by then, okay, it's too many. So I remember they asked Ye Xiaogang, you know, would you like to be a you know, student from a piano department because you play great piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, they asked me to, uh, because I play violin, they want me to uh, go to orchestra department. But uh, I said, uh, you know, I would like to, you know, conducting department. So, uh, and so we did the audition, re-audition again. And uh, luckily I was admitted. Nineteen seventy seven and nineteen seventy eight were magical years for China's Central Conservatory of Music, producing many young talents.
Among the greats that graduated with Hu and Tan are such celebrated figures as Liu Sola and Ye Shangdang. Is there some, you know, kind of a secret recipe in the class? <laughs> what exactly happened in that class? I think because it's just uh, you know, so many times, you know, so much time, just really, really stuck there, and uh, then suddenly just it's sort of like you open a can. Of <laughs> it's like all the explode. talents were waiting, yeah, waiting, waiting, waiting for that waiting. moment. Yeah, and they all happened to be yeah. coming up in that year. We are we are much older to you know come to a college mm. level. Be then of course. We 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 did have some you know uh, uh, experience you know socially you know and also at the workplace you know we sort of know so we are not just like a teenage. Mm. Uh, I Moment think that's sure. yeah that that's probably contributes uh, those uh, you know phenomenon you mm. know suddenly have you know quite few figures in, in there. Do you still work with your your fellow classmates now? Uh, yeah, we from time to time. I'm, uh, you know, uh, working very closely with Xiao Gang. You have that modern music yeah, festival. Yeah, we we're sort of co-founders, mm -hmm. you know. So we, we, you know, it's, uh, next year going to be the fifteenth uh, year. So that's right. Um, yeah, Tan Dun, some, you know, we always sometimes we call, sometimes we write, and we share some uh, interesting things. Mm -hmm. And now he's more into uh, conducting. So he had to, uh, he has to uh, uh, learn conducting from me. <laughs> <laughs> you were the, not the master, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, when you have the chance to work with your classmates, now how do you see them? What, what is your impressions? I know them so well. Okay. Even they write a brand new piece. I didn't know before. I don't know anything. I just look at the music, I, I basically you know, read through. You could recognize them. Uh, oh, it's not even recognized. You know, you know, to somewhere, the next turn, the next move, I uh, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh -huh. so it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's that kind of feeling actually, um, it's really um, uh, warmed me up. Their growth actually, you know, is mine too. Mm. I was probably those earlier one, mm. uh, you know, in, in, in USA. New York is always exciting. So it's, it's a fascinating time. Here, uh, they teach you uh, what the music is, but uh, there, they teach you how to love music. What was the um, the biggest push for you at the time to make that decision to study in the U.S.? Uh, because I always try to uh, 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 learn something, say, you know from a very authentic way or better way. Mm. And of course, you know, I was lucky, you know, first time I was lucky, so to be, uh, you know, uh, able to come to this uh, uh, good school. Mm. And then, you know, the China start open, and then of course, you know, we all be able to uh, go to Europe or maybe uh, US. I was probably, uh, those earlier ones mm. uh, you know, in the USA. Uh, and you don't even how to you know, ask the directions when you, you know, lost in the streets. Nevertheless, always have sort of one thing, you know, that mission in ourselves is to finish the school there. Uh, then, of course, you know, in the school, it's, uh, it's uh, not only teaching music, I think it's everything, you know, socially, culturally, everything, you know, the, the, the values, you know, the people, and uh, I always think, I always say that, uh, you know, here, uh, they teach you uh, what the music is, but uh, there, they teach you how to love music. I was quite, uh, not overconfident, but you know, I was quite confident. Chinese students are always the best. It's a, it's a very amazing. 
as far you know as long as they talk about the music, I, I sort of you know understood everything. So in other words, academically, you were super confident about yourself. <laughs> But in terms of life, that could be a challenge. Yeah, we get as many work as we could, you know. What did you do at the time? Well, at uh, Yale, I was, I forgot, um, I sort of worked in the library. We just you know, dusted, you know, the, the books okay. and, uh, and, uh, and uh, give the car and uh, sign off and uh, that's all. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very simple. You don't need a language. Mm. <laughs> it's just very simple. Uh, uh, in New York, I think you probably uh, uh, read about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Tan Dun and the Vera, you know, we, we sometime weekend, we always play the violin in the streets. The New York is always exciting. We met up people a lot, different, all kinds of people. We know Painters, you know, in the street, sculptors and the photographers, and we have, you know, friends. So it's a fascinating time. It was poor for me. It's really poor, but probably it's the happiest time in my life because you feel so free. What were you like at the time? I mean, were, you, were you shy to be performing in front of so many, oh, no. you know, <laughs> strange faces? Oh, no, 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 because the environment is different. It's so friendly. And we, we, we made friends through other uh, group of musicians, too. You know, they're from uh, Manhattan, from uh, Manners, and sometimes from Boston, uh, yeah. And we know some really good spots to really make it. Good money, yeah. Those good spots. spots. Are, uh, well, yeah, it's not, you know, every spot, no. Just only a few spots, probably. Where, where were they? I mean, what spots were the good uh, spots? See, uh, <laughs> Outside the theater, major no, hall? No, 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 no. The East Village. And a certain subway station, you know, there's busy, you know. Uh, 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 Huge p human flow, human <laughs> uh, passenger flow. The, 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 the transferring, transferring okay. center. There's okay. a lot of many. And uh, yeah, those uh, places. And uh, maybe uh, you go to a ferry station. But later on, both you and Tandu made it to the inside of these concert halls, <laughs> not just on the street, right? You, you performed on the, all these proper uh, <laughs> stages. Can you actually manage to find any, anything in common between a proper stage, say, inside those theater halls and that little corner street stage? One thing I can tell you is if the audience likes you, you play better. In 1989, Hu Yongyan graduated from the renowned Juilliard School in New York City with a master's degree. Since then, his formal training has been complemented through frequent collaboration with other musicians to create classical music, operas, musicals, film soundtracks, and even road shows. This是美国一个非常漂亮的城市 Thank you. 
国家开放，有很多呃优秀的人才到美国或者到欧洲出来深造，啊，当然要需要一段一段的时间，深造以后，他们才有一个机会，啊，跟跟那个美国音乐家进行交流。What is it like to be able to work with all these, you know, first-class orchestras around the world? They're professional, so you, um, well, be particular. First of all, you say less. Okay, don't talk. <laughs> As conductor, do not talk. Okay, just wave your arms. Do it. Do it. Yeah. But you have to convey your message to the members of the orchestra, yeah. make them understand what you, how you understand music, mm -hmm. right? Through your gesture, mm. through your eye contacting, okay, through your body language, maybe just one smile and you solve everything. Mm. What makes a good conductor then? Humbleness? I, I would say all the better conductors, better artists, mm. they are humble. You went abroad and you yeah. came back again. So in other words, I mean, before this, before you helped establish yeah. this orchestra, you were conducting, you were working with all these well-established orchestras <laughs> yeah. around the world. Yeah. In other words, you could have chosen a more famous one, a more established one, a more mature orchestra anywhere in the world. <laughs> Somehow you still chose this one. Well, for conductor, you know, any conductor, we don't only conduct one orchestra. Mm. That sort of a time is over. You know, Carl Young only conducted Berlin Philharmonic basically for his life. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, we call it jet conductor. So we, uh, we, we, yeah, we, we love to conduct, you know, the best orchestra, the mature, the professional orchestra, of course. But uh, in the meantime, I mean, in, at the same time, I think, you know, um, for conductor, especially, you know, uh, I'm getting older and uh, you, you sort of thinking, you know, how to really, really build a good orchestra training program. Mm. So that's what we do. That's what we do, yeah. So in other words, you see yourself as a conductor, no doubt, but yeah. at the same time as, a con uh, as an educator. Too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Conductor, actually, the job, you know, primarily mm. is teacher. You're teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, you're teaching. It's like a priest. You're preaching. That's <laughs> you're right. You're preaching music. That's right. You're preaching, you know, uh, how to love music. That's the thing. That's okay? right. Uh, so the first job you're teaching always, and people just, you know, watch you, and uh, so, and uh, mm -hmm. they want to give the comments, mm -hmm. give some instru instructions. Yeah, and uh, then, of course, you have to do something you know, in action and mm -hmm. uh, to be with the whole, whole orchestra to make the orchestra, you know, music happen. Mm -hmm.